our daughter, Erica, made the decision to take her own life. We do not understand this. As she was such an amazing person. However, we feel it is important to share with you some facts as we understand them. Knowledge can lead to understanding. Maybe not of this event, but overall where our society fits. Erica always wanted to know. In our business, we like to try and understand the root cause of an incident in order to try to stop that incident from ever reoccurring. We then share information and this information, and if this information can save another life, possibly a few, because it's not often talked about, then Erica's passing will not be in vain. I truly hope none of you ever have to live what we are experiencing now. So please listen. Here are some of the things that we've learned. First off, why would someone take their own life? Every situation is different. I'll provide some generalizations here to help provide some understanding. From the resources I've looked at and the counseling I've received so far, this is what I can tell you. The common painful thread that runs through this type of death is the pressure of unbearable anguish felt by the person. Total despair. The act is better understood as an escape from rather than going to. The person feels trapped in a corner by un overwhelming and unbearable menace, emotional pain. Like one trapped in a burning building, the person takes this option to stop a slow torture she was experiencing in life. This provides a small sketch of the illness at the core of our society that causes an individual to totally lose hope for a better life. White collar professionals in leadership positions are at a greater risk with many suicides completed by persons whose minds are at the height of their capability. Mental health issues are factors in most suicides. Nearly 90% of folks may suffer from depression or bipolar disorder or other mental health issues. However, this does not mean that all people that die by suicide show signs of mental health issues. Suicide ideation is now understood as a sickness. Often people with depression suffer it silently and struggle with suicide ideation without anyone ever, anyone ever knowing. Anxiety is a mental health issue that is often misunderstood and often not related to suicide ideation by the general public. If you think of a person's mind as a glass, with each experience being another drop of water into that glass until one day the glass will not hold one more drop and the person finds their life unbearable to live. It is not usually one thing that results in a person taking their own life, but a combination of things, like drops that overflow the glass. Grief is most severe for those who never expected either the death or the suicide. The suffering of these survivors is most acute. A suicide survivor is someone who's lost a loved one to this illness. We are suicide survivors. In North America, in 1980, there were 30,000 deaths by suicide. In 2009, 40,000. Last year, over 55,000. This illness is an epidemic, the second largest killer of young people, and one of the top 10 causes of death for the general population in North America surpassing homicide. It means every day, 150 people pass away by suicide. A statistic which is likely very low, since there's a number of things that are often, such as single vehicle accidents that go unreported as death by suicide. 
So 150, 200, 250 people per day. This epidemic is, most, is the most underfunded illness in our society. Knowledge and understanding can lead to reducing this risk for so many amazing people. Please learn the warning signs of suicide. Before this happened, I had no idea. This information should be among the information at the back of the room as well. The best way to remember the warning signs of suicide is the easy to remember in a moment. I can't even pronounce this word. Menomic is path warm. Ideation, that's the thought and the process of people talking about it or thinking about it. Substance abuse, purposelessness, anxiety, feeling of being trapped, hopelessness, withdrawal, anger, recklessness, mood changes. If you see these in someone you love, contact a mental health professional or dial 1-800-SUICIDE. Learning about and how you think about suicide and watching for signs of suicide will hopefully help you to not have to experience what we are going through. Reach out and talk about this. 200 people a day. I've been to a number of funerals of good people. I've known seven people who have passed by suicide. And never was I ever given any information. And unfortunately, never did I really think about what were the signs. I don't know if I would have seen them. If I knew, I don't know. But I sure think about everything that I ever did. Because if I could change it, I would. This information has helped us now, after the fact. Please learn about this illness. Because you never know, you may save one of your loved ones in your family one day. I certainly hope so. Because we are so totally crushed. And we never, ever saw this coming. I never expected to be here. So we wanted to pass on that information. And we think it's important. And I'll tell you, I'll be back up here shortly. We wanted somebody else to provide that, but I thought it was best if I did with vote Brenda here. We loved our daughter, and we're very proud of her. 